Hello viewers, welcome to May, June 2021, Wayek, also known as WASI, past questions and detailed solution, general mathematics, mathematics core, paper 2, part 2. This part contains question 6 to 13, about 8 questions, and you are to answer 5 questions in this part solution to eight questions in one video question 6a in a class of 80 students three over four study biology and three over five study physics if each student studies at least one of the subjects remember figure one draw a venn diagram to represent this information remember figure two how many students study both subjects roman figure three find the fraction of the class that study biology but not physics solution let p represents physics and B represents biology. From the question, the universal set, that is the combination of the students in the class is 80 students. From this 80, three over four study biology. So number of students that study biology is equal to three over four times 80 and that is 60 those that study physics 3 over 5 of the entire class and that is 3 over 5 times 80 you have 48 degrees those that study both subjects they are not given so let's use s to replace that is n of B intersection P. Those that studied both subjects, let that number be S. That is the point of intersection. So in vector diagram notation, the, the rectangle is universal set and the subset they are circle. So they have points of intersection. That is S, point of intersection. That point is unknown. So if here is S, then those that study biology is 60. Then only biology. Because in this place of intersection, you have fees as well. So only biology becomes 60 minus S. And only physics is 48 minus S. That is the Venn diagram. Now you are asked to find how many students study both subject that is s the point of intersection you simply add all the elements in the subsets and you equate it to 80 then you get s those that study both subjects so if you add all the elements in the subsets you equate it to 80 from here, minus S plus S is 0, 60 plus 48. You have 108 minus S equal to 80. So you transfer S to the right, 80 to the left. You have 108 minus 80 equal to S. Therefore, S is equal to A equal to 28. Roman figure 3, fraction of the class that study biology but not physics. This is the fraction of the class that study biology but not physics. That is 60 minus S over 80. So you have 60 minus 28 over 80 and that is 32 over 80. If you divide the two numbers by the highest common factor of 16, you have 2 
over 5 as the fraction of the class that study biology but not physics. Question 6b. Johnson and Jokator Limited owned a business office with floor measuring 15 meters by 8 meters, which was to be carpeted. The cost of the carpet was 890 Ghana CD per square meter if a total of 216,120 Ghana CD was spent on painting and carpeting. How much was the cost of painting? All right. From the question per square meter, the cost for carpeting is this. So you have to get the cost for the entire office. Then you subtract from the total cost for you to the total cost. This total cost is for both painting and carpeting. So if you get the cost for for carpeting, you subtract, you get the cost for painting. So area of the floor by the given measurement, the floor is rectangular and the area is the length 15 times the breadth 8 and that is 120 square centimeter. If the cost of carpet for one square meter for one square meter. Alright, before then, the unit here for the area is 120 square meters. Now, from the question, the cost of the carpet for one square meter is this. Therefore, for 120, cost of carpeting is 120 times 890 Ghana CD and that gives this amount. Total cost for painting and carpeting is this. Now, the one for carpeting is already known. So the one for painting is subtracting the cost for carpeting minus the total cost which is what you have here. When you subtract, the cost of painting is 109,320 Ghana CDs. Question 7a. Copy and complete the table of values for the relation y equal to 2x squared minus s minus 2 4 minus 4 less than equal to s less than equal to 4. You can see the table of values with some missing y values and of course you are expected to look for them. Be part of the question using a scale of 2 cm to 1 unit on the s axis and 2 cm to 5 units on the y axis draw the graph of y equal to 2s squared minus s minus 2 for minus 4 less than equal to s less than equal to 4. C part of the question. On the same axis, draw the graph of y equal to 2s plus 3. So you have a quadratic and a linear graph. D. Use the graph to find the graph figure 1, the roots of the equation 2s squared minus 3s minus 5. Roman figure 2, range of values of s for which 2s squared minus s minus 2 is less than 0. Solution. B. 
because you are to plot two in one graph that is the quadratic and the linear so we have to construct two tables of values the first one is the a part that is the quadratic uh, equation where you have s values from minus 4 to 4 to get y we need basically two things that is 2 s squared and minus s minus 2 is a constant and as such you write it under each value of s you have minus 2 minus 2 minus 2 like that so let's get 2 s squared first you get s squared multiply it by 2 to get 2 s squared when s is minus 4 s squared becomes minus 4 in bracket you square it you have 16 times 2 is 32 when s is minus 3 if you square minus 3 you have 9 9 times 2 is 18 when s is minus 2 2 s squared becomes 8 and so on for minus s you simply negate the s value so if s is minus 4 here minus s becomes 4 when s is minus 3 minus s become 3 when s is 2 minus s becomes minus 2 and so on next thing is to add 32 plus 4 is 36 minus 2 you have 34 18 plus 3 is 21 minus 2 you have 19 8 plus 2 you have 10 10 minus 2 you have 8 and so on so let's jump to C part and construct the table of values for the linear graph y equal to 2s plus 3 now let's use the same range of values for s to get y for the linear graph you just need to compute 2s because plus 3 is a constant and as such you write it under each value of s so when s is minus 4 2s is minus 8 when s is minus 3 2s is minus 6 when s is minus 2 2s is minus 4 when s is 3 2s is 6 and so on you simply add minus 8 plus 3 you have minus 5 minus 6 plus 3 is minus 3 minus 4 plus 3 you have minus 1 minus 2 plus 3 is 1 0 plus 3 is 4 6 0 plus 3 is 3 0 plus 3 is 3 6 plus 3 is 9 and so on after this we can now plot the graph but you plot them at separate times you don't plot the two at the same time that can lead to confusion we are now in b part the plotting of the quadratic curve the scale given is 2 cm to 1 unit on s axis 2 cm to 5 units on y axis this graph you have here each of the bus has five lines so the five lines represent one cm what this k implies is that you you count two buses from the from the the point zero here the origin to the end of the second bus you give it one so the next two becomes two the next two becomes three and so on if you move to the left 
you have negative values for the y axis from the origin to the end of the second bus you give it 5 the next is 10 followed by 15 20 and so on if you move downward from the origin you have minus 5 minus 10 and minus 15 this scale implies that one line is equal to 0 0.1 units on the s axis the two the two squares is 10 lines so if you divide number of units one by number of lines 10 you have 0 0.1 and on the y axis one line is 0 0.5 units so we plot the first point when s is minus 4 y is 34 so this is minus 4 by this k if one line is 0 0.5 it means two lines we give you one two lines is one so from from 30 then the the first two lines that is 31 the next two line 32 the next two line 33 the next two line 34 that is the point you have here and this is that point when s is minus 3 y is 19 if you do your usual counting you have it somewhere here from 15 you count about 8 lines if one line is 0 0.5 or you count four lines if two lines will give you one you have 18 at that point when minus 2 for s y is 8 this is the point when s is minus 1 y is 1 that is the point when s is 0 y is minus 2 you plot that point directly on the y axis. When s is 1, y is minus 1. That is a point you have here. When s is 2, y is 4. 4 is close to 5. When s is 3, y is 13. So after 10, you count the next two lines, 11. The next two lines, 12. The next two lines, 13. You have it somewhere here. And when S is 4, Y is 26. So you join all the points together. So you, you, you always include the title of the graph. The title is simply the equation that you are given to plot. All the points have been joined together. So we move to see part of the question plotting of the linear graph. So you have the table of value for the linear graph minus 4 for s and y is minus 5. You have it somewhere here. When s is minus 3, y is minus 3. When s is minus 2, y is minus 1. Minus 1 for s implies 1 for y. We have the same points on the curve. When s is 0, y is 3. You plot that point directly on the y axis. When s is 1, y is 5. When s is 2, y is 7. When s is 3, y is 9, and when s is 4, y is 11. If you join all the points together, you are going to have a straight line graph. All the points have been joined together. You now have the quadratic and the linear graph together. The part of the question 
use the graph to find the roots of the equation 2x squared minus 3x minus 5. One thing you must note here is that you can only solve any equation using the graph if and only if it can be simplified to the quadratic equation or the linear equation or both or both now if you share the first term of the given equation it is the same as the first term of the quadratic equation for that reason let us transfer the other two terms to the right hand side so if you do that you have 2s squared equal to 3s plus 5 if you transfer the two terms now to get the second term of the quadratic equation you need to subtract s from both sides so you subtract s from both sides in this manner you see that so that gives 2s squared equal minus s equal to 2s plus 5. For the quadratic, you need minus 2. To achieve that, you simply subtract 2 from both sides. And that is what you have here. After that step, what you have is 2s squared minus s minus 2 equal to 2s plus 3. If you observe very well, you see that the left hand side is the quadratic equation and the right hand side is the linear equation. So the two graphs are embedded in this equation. What it means is that the solution to this equation is the point of intersection of the curve and the line since both are equal point of intersection so you go to the graph now this is one point of intersection of the curve and the line if you trace to the x axis you have minus one this is another point of intersection if you trace to the x axis you have it somewhere here and if you trace from 2 or you count from 2 because I said that one line is 0 0.1 by the time you get here you have 5 lines so from 2 you have 2.5 2 2.5 so the solution of the equation are s equal to minus 1 or 2.5 5. Remember figure 2 of part D, you are asked to find the range of values of S for which 2S squared minus S minus 2 is less than 0. What you have here is the quadratic curve. So the range of values at the point the curve cuts the S as is the point where the curve cuts the S as is you can see it one point is here and another point is here so if you count from the origin here you have minus 0 0.8 and if you count from 1 you have 1.3 1.3 so the range of value is written using inequality symbol. So you have minus 0 0.8 less than S less than 1.3. Peter Cost simplified maths. If you are watching a view from YouTube, don't forget to subscribe, like and share PSM videos. If you are watching a view from Facebook, follow and like the page for more updates. Share PSM videos. Question 8A. 
in triangle PQRO, angle PQRO is equal to 90 degrees. If its area is 216 square centimeters and side PQ ratio QRO is 3 ratio 4. Find P arrow. This triangle represents or illustrates the information. So you have Q here in three letters notation. The middle letter is where the angle is located. So that angle is 90 degrees. So you are asked to find P arrow. That is the hypotenuse. From the question, you have PQ ratio QRO is equal to 3 ratio 4. Area of the triangle is this. Now you can express the ratio in fractional form. You have it in this form. Here the choice is yours. You can express any side in terms of the other one. But here, you want to express PQ in terms of Q arrow. So if you simply multiply through by Q arrow, you have PQ to be equal to 3 over 4 times Q arrow. For a triangle, the area is 1 over 2 times base times height. The area is 216 equal to 1 over 2 the base is Q arrow and the height is PQ. Now we have expressed PQ in terms of Q arrow in this form. You see that? So 216 is equal to 1 times 3 is 3, 2 times 4 is 8. Then Q arrow times Q arrow is Q arrow square. You have it in this form. Multiply through by 8 to clear fraction, you have this line. Divide both sides by 3 to get Q arrow squared. This is what you have here. If you multiply and divide by 3, you have 576. To get Q arrow, you take the square root of both sides. So Q arrow is equal to square root of 576. And that is 24. Now let's get PQ. So PQ is 3 over 4 times Q arrow. And you have 3 over 4 times 24. That is 18. Because the triangle is a right angle triangle, we can get P arrow using Pythagoras rule. So you have P arrow squared is equal to PQ squared plus Q arrow squared. So P arrow squared is equal to 18 squared plus 24 squared. P arrow squared is equal to 324 for 18 squared plus 576 for 24 squared. And when you add, you get 900. P arrow is equal to square root of 900 and that is 30 centimeters question 8b the present ages of a man and his son are 47 years and 17 years respectively in how many years would the man's age be twice that of his son. So this question is going into the future solution. The man's present age is 47. His son's present age is 17. So in S yes time, S yes time, you add the S to their current ages or present ages. So the man's age becomes 47 plus S and the son's age is 17 plus S. P 
put together in s years time the man the man's age will be twice that of his son that is 47 plus s equal to 2 bracket open 17 plus s if you open the bracket you have this result color light terms you have this result and you have s is equal to 13 so in 13 years time the man age will be twice that of his son you can do a simple check now let's verify that in 13 years time the man will be 60 years and the son will be 30 years you understand that 60 is twice 30 that is 30 times 2 is 60 so the answer is very correct question 9 in the diagram p q r o s is a trapezium with q r o parallel p s u and t are points on p s such that p u equal to 5 cm q u 12 cm angle p u q is equal to angle s t r o and you have 90 degrees if the area of triangle p q r o is 20 square centimeters calculate correct to the nearest whole number d a part of the question perimeter b area of the trapezium solution the perimeter is simply the addition of all the sides so you start from pq to qr to ros to st to tu and pu if you know all the sides you add them together that gives the perimeter and once that is done getting the area becomes very easy you have solution perimeter is pq plus qr plus ros plus st plus tu plus up so you can start from any side so let's try and get q arrow q arrow is located in triangle p q arrow so q arrow is the base then q u is the height so area of triangle p q arrow is 1 over 2 times base times height the area is given as 20 in the question equal to 1 over 2 times the base q arrow is unknown times the height 12 so you have 20 equal to 6b divide 12 by 2 you have 6 to get b divide both sides by 6 so b is 20 over 6 and that is 3.33 cm now b is equal to q arrow and q arrow is equal to t u so we know two sides as 3.33 cm now let's try and get pq to get pq you can consider triangle q u p that triangle is a right angled triangle so by pythagoras rule p q squared is equal to q u squared plus p u squared so p q squared is equal to 12 squared plus 5 squared p q squared is equal to 144 plus 25 and that is 169 to get pq you take the square root of both sides and pq is equal to square root of 169 and you have 13 centimeters so we know pq we know qr 
we know T U. We know T U. Now let's get arrow S. To get arrow S, we can consider triangle arrow T S. So Q U the height here is equal to arrow T the height here. So arrow S is the hypotenuse. So in triangle arrow S T sign. 50 degrees is equal to opposite 12 over hypotenuse arrow s if you make arrow as a subject you have 12 over sine 5 0 degrees and that is 15.66 centimeters next is to get ts to get ts we consider the same triangle TS or ST. In that triangle, ST is the adjacent, ROT is opposed so by tangent, tan 50 degrees is equal to opposite 12 over adjacent ST. If you make ST the subject, you have this result. If you shake tan 50, then divide 12 by the value of tan 50, you have 10.06 cm. With this, we've gotten all the sides that the perimeter is addition. Let's start with PQ. PQ is 13, so you have 13 plus Q arrow. Look at Q arrow here. Q arrow is 3.33. Now we move to arrow S. Arrow S is 15.66 plus ST. ST is 10.06. TU is 3.33 and UP is 5. If you add together, you have 50.38, approximately 50 centimeters. B part is to find the area of the trapezium and the area is 1 over 2 times the sum of parallel sides which are Q arrow and PS times the height Q U. So Q arrow is 3.33 plus PS is from PU. That is 5 cm to ut, that is 3.33 to ts, that is 10.06. That is what you have here. Times the height 12. Divide 12 by 2, you have 6 here. If you add these terms, you have 18.39, then plus 3.33. 3. And that is 21.72 times 6. And you have 130.32. To the nearest whole number, you have 130 square centimeters as the area of the trapezium. All answers to the nearest whole number. Peter Cos simplified maths. If you are watching and view from YouTube, don't forget to subscribe for more updates, like and share PSM videos. If you are watching and view from Facebook, follow and like the page for more updates. Also share PSM videos. Question 10A. A cottage is on a bearing of 200 degrees and 110 degrees from Dogbe and Manu's farm, respectively. If Dogbe walked 5 kilometers and Manu 3 kilometers from the cottage to their farms, find correct to Roman figure 1, 2 SF, the distance between the two farms, Roman figure 2 to the nearest degree, the bearing of Manu's farm from Dogbe solution a cottage is a small house or a small hut or a small cot 
Now, the, you, can, you can assess the cottage from the two farms. From Dogbe's farm, the bearing is 200 degrees. So if Dogbe's farm is somewhere here, from the north, 200 degree is in the third quadrant. So you have the cottage down of Dogbe's farm. Now for Manu's farm, the bearing is 110. 110 is in the second quadrant. That is also down of so the cocktail is also done of Manu's farm. So you have Dogbe's farm here. From the north to the third quadrant is 200. Now why is this place 20 degrees? Now the whole of the first and second quadrant is 180 degrees. So if you add 20 to 180, it gives 200. That is why from the end of the second quadrant to this line is 20 degrees and by implication this angle is also 20 degrees that is alternate angles then from Manus farm the bearing from the north to this point is 110 degrees the whole of the first and second quadrant is 180 degrees if you have 110 out of it the remaining place must be 70 degrees so by implication this angle is 70 degrees if you add the two angles you have one you have 90 degrees 90 degrees now the distance between the two farms is represented by s and because one of the angles is 90 degrees, we have a right angled triangle. So you can find S, the side that is facing the, the right angle using Pythagoras theorem. From the question, Dogbes walked 5 kilometers from the cottage to his farm and Manus walked 3 kilometers from the cottage to his farm. So let's find the distance between the two farms using Pythagoras rule. So the first question is to find the distance between the two farms. Let the distance between the two farms be S. And because this angle is a right angle, you can use Pythagoras rule and you have the longest side S that is S squared equal to 5 squared plus 3 squared and that is 25 plus 9 you have 34 to get S you take the root of both sides and S is equal to square root of 34 and that is 5.83095 to 2SF you have 5.8 kilometers remember figure 2 of part A you have to find the bearing of Manus farm from Dogbes that means Manus farm from Dogbes, you go to Dogbes farm. You go to Dogbes farm and you, you start movement from the north to the line that join the two farms together. Already from here to this point is 200. So you just need from here to here, which we represent with theta. So once you get theta, you add it to 200 degrees. So you have it that the bearing of Manu's farm from Dogbes is 200 degrees plus theta. We can get theta easily since the triangle 
is a right angled triangle. So tan theta is equal to opposite over adjacent, and that is 3 over 5. If you divide, you have 0 0.6. Yeah, you have 0 0.6, 0 0.6. So you have 0 0.6. This implies that theta is the arc or inverse of tangent of 0 0.6. That is 30.96 degrees. Therefore, the bearing of Manus fan from Dogbes is 200 degrees plus 30.96 degrees and that is 230.96 degrees to so the nearest degree you have 231 degrees as the bearing of Manus farm from Dogbe's farm question 10b a ladder 10 meters long leaned against a vertical wall s meters high the distance between the wall and the foot of the ladder is two meters longer than the height of the wall calculate the value of s solution of course you have b w as the wall and the height is s meter the ladder fw leaned against the wall and the distance between the wall and the foot of the ladder is two meters longer than the height of the wall height of the wall is s meters distance from f to b is two plus s meters what you have is a right angle triangle so we get s using pythagoras theorem the hypotenuse is 10 then you have the other two sides so you have 10 squared equal to s squared plus 2 plus s all squared if you simplify this bracket you have this result alongside other terms already we have a quadratic equation in order to solve one of the sides needs to be zero so let us transfer 100 in so you have s squared plus s squared is 2s squared plus 4s plus 4 you transfer plus 100 it becomes minus 100 equal to zero you subtract you have this result you observe that 2 can divide through so that the terms can be reduced I mean the coefficient so you have s squared plus 2s minus 48 equal to 0 you can factorize you can factorize now if you compare this with a s squared plus b s plus c you will see that a is equal to 1 coefficient of s squared b is equal to 2 coefficient of s and c is equal to minus 48 the constant term and whenever a is equal to 1 you look for two factors of the constant term that is 48 that the sum is plus 2 in s and the product is minus 48 such factors must be plus 8 minus 6 you write them in terms of s and replace the middle term with them in this form the purpose is to get four terms so that you factorize by grouping the first two terms the first group the last two terms the second group ensure that you use a plus sign to separate the two groups from the first group s is common you factor out s you are left with s plus 8 from the second group minus 6 is common you factor it out you have s plus 8 
you equate everything to zero clearly s plus 8 is common if you factor it out again you have s remaining here and minus 6 that will form the other bracket you equate the two factors to zero and when you collect like terms you have s equal to minus 8 or 6 the height cannot be negative therefore the value of s is 6 centimeters question 11 the table shows the distribution of the number of hours per day spent in studying by 50 students so you have number of hours per day number of students is the frequency so you can take number of hours per day as s so you have 4 to 11 for the frequency it means five students studied four hours per day seven students five hours five students six hours nine students seven hours twelve students eight hours four students nine hours three students ten hours five students eleven hours calculate correct to two decimal places d a part of the question mean and b part standard deviation because the data involve frequency the mean can be computed using this formula and the standard deviation any of these so we need to construct another table showing s showing f showing fs and other columns that need to be added in order to find the standard deviation the solution continues so you have s and y as given in the table so for us to find the mean we need to add the column for fs that is the product of s and f so you have 4 times 5 20 5 times 7 35 6 times 5 30 7 times 9 63 and so on summation fs means you should add this column down if you add you have 365 summation f means you should add this column down and when you add you have 50 so the mean is 365 divided by 50 and you have 7.30 to two decimal places for the for the standard deviation we are going to use this formula to do that so sd is equal to summation f s squared over summation f minus what you have here is the mean then you square it because of this we just need two more columns you need to get s squared and f s squared so you square the s column for you to get s squared first squared is 16 5 squared 25 6 squared 36 7 squared 49 and so on to get f s squared you use the frequency column to multiply s squared color so 5 times 16 is 80 7 times 25 you have 175 5 times 36 you have 180 
3 times 100, you have 300 and so on. So you also add this column down and you have 2,873. So you replace fs squared with 2873, then f is 50. Already from the first part, you know summation fs over summation f as the mean to be 7.3. You simply square it. You divide this place, you have 57.46. You square 7.3 you have 53.29 if you subtract you get 4.17 and if you check the square root of 4.17 you have 2.0421 to two decimal places you have 2.04 as the standard deviation peter calls simplified maths if you are watching and view from YouTube, don't forget to subscribe for more updates, like and share PSM videos. If you are viewing and watching from Facebook, follow and like the page for more updates. Also share PSM videos. Question 12A. In the diagram, PQROS is a circle. PQ is equal to QS. Angle S P R O is equal to 26 degrees and the interior angles of triangle P Q S are in the ratio 2 ratio 3 ratio 3. Calculate Roman figure 1 angle P Q R O. Roman figure 2 angle R O P Q. Roman figure 3, angle P, arrow Q, solution. Angle P, Q, arrow, that is this entire angle is equal to angle P, Q, S. That is this angle plus angle S, Q, arrow, that is this angle. Now, it follows that angle S, Q, arrow, is equal to angle S P R O. This angle equal to this angle. That is angles in the same segment. Now to get P Q S, you need to visit triangle P Q S. And in that triangle, the interior angles are given in ratio. So ratio of interior angles. In triangle PQS, you have 2 ratio 3 ratio 3. You know where you have 3 3 there. Now, let me just explain that. Now, you were given that PQ is equal to QS. That means triangle PQS is isosceles triangle. So, the base angle, this angle is equal to this angle so they have the same ratio 3 3 you see that so let's get sum of ratio that is 2 plus 3 plus 3 equal to 8 in triangle spq already the base angle they are equal the base angles are equal now let's start from angle pqs so angle pqs since these two angles are equal they have the ratio of 3, 3. So the remaining angle, PQS, its ratio is 2. So PQS is 2 over sum of ratio, that is 8, times total angles in that triangle. So you have 45 degrees. So PSQ is equal to SPQ, and their ratio is 3 over 8 times 180. And that gives 67.5 degrees. So back to angle PQRO. PQRO is equal to PQS. That is 45 degrees plus angle SQRO 26 degrees. And when you add, you have 
71 degrees 71 degrees okay this line is not needed again because it's already stated earlier roman figure 2 find angle arrow p q arrow p q that is arrow p q arrow p q and that is simply now the entire angle is 67.5 and halfway of it is 26 degrees so arrow p q this this other angle here arrow p q is simply angle s p q minus angle s p arrow that is 67.5 degrees minus 26 degrees and you have 41.5 degrees roman figure 3 find angle p arrow q p arrow q this angle we can use the sum of angles in a triangle this angle is known this angle is known if you add the three angles the sum is 180 you can get this angle p arrow q so you have it in this form so p arrow q is equal to 180 minus this angle when transferred minus this when transferred you have it in this form if you subtract you have 67.5 degrees question 12b the coordinates of two points p and q in a plane are 7 3 5 comma s respectively where s is a real number if the length pq is root 29 units find the value of s the length pq can be obtained using this simple formula that is the the distance between two points and pq is already root 29 now if you go by the coordinate 7 is s1 3 is y1 5 is s2 and s is y2 so if you replace the values with what they stand for in the formula you have it in this form so you don't have to square both sides to remove the square root sign so if, so if you square both sides you have this remaining so if you open the bracket here of course you know 5 minus 7 is minus 2 minus 2 squared is 4 so if you expand this bracket you have s squared minus 6s plus 9 what you have here is quadratic equation so let's move 29 to the right hand side so you have s squared minus 6s now 4 plus 9 is 13 if you move plus 29 it becomes minus 29 equal to 0 so finally you have s squared minus 6s minus 16 equal to 0 to factorize look for two factors of 16 that the sum is minus 6 in s and the product is minus 16 such factors must be minus 8 plus 2 minus 8 plus 2 so you express minus 8 plus 2 in terms of s and replace the middle term minus 6s with them in this form the purpose is to have four terms so that you can factorize by grouping the first two terms have the first group the last two terms the second group 
equal to zero. From the first group, you factor out S, you are left with S minus eight. And the second group, you factor out two, you are left with S minus eight as well, equal to zero. Clearly, S minus eight is common. If you take it out, you have S remaining here, you have plus two remaining here that combine to form the other bracket and you equate to zero. You equate each factor to zero, you have with this form. If you transfer the respective constant terms, that is minus eight and plus two to the right hand side, you have S equal to eight or S equal to minus two. Therefore, S is equal to minus two or eight as the value of S. Question 13a. On Sam's first birthday celebration, his grandfather deposited an amount of $1,000 in a bank compounded at 4% interest yearly. Find how much is in the account if Sam is 4 years old. Solution. The amount is unknown. Principal. What is deposited is $1,000. The rate is 4%. Note that the amount was deposited on Sam's first birthday. That means the, the year for calculation of the interest is 3 because it starts counting as from the second year. So N is equal to 3. For amount in compound interest, this simple formula is used to compute it. So principal is 1000 bracket open 1 plus rate is 4 over 100 and n is 3. So you have 1000 bracket open 1 plus 0 0.04. If you divide this bracket close to the power of 3, if you add, you get this. If you check 1.04 to the power of 3, you have this result. Multiply it by 1,000, you have 1,124.86 dollars. Amount in Sam's account at the end of the fourth year is 1,124. Point eight six dollars. Question thirteen B. In the diagram, A, B, C, D are points on the circle center O. If A, B is equal to B, C, and angle A, D, C is equal to fifty degrees, find angle B A D that is the whole of this angle but we are told that A B is equal to B C that means we can join A to C so that you have isosceles triangle once you get this angle here the base angles are equal because O is the center it means AD is a diameter. So this angle is 90 degrees. Then you can get angle BAD. The solution continue. Angle BAD is equal to angle CAD. That is this angle first plus BAC. That is this angle. Considering triangle ADC, triangle ADC, if you 
we want to get this angle first in that triangle if you add all the angles together the sum is 180 degrees so a d c is 50 degrees like i said earlier if o is the center a d is a diameter that means this angle is 90 degrees so you have d c a is 90 degrees plus angle c a d equal to 180 degrees so angle c a d is equal to 180 minus the sum of these two angles and that is 140 degrees if you subtract you have 40 degrees so we know one part of that angle now angle a d c plus a b c this angle and this angle the sum is 180 sum of interior angles in a cyclic quadrilateral so you have 50 degrees plus angle a b c equal to 180 degrees angle a b c is equal to 180 degrees minus 50 degrees and you have 130 degrees triangle a b c is isosceles triangle already because you see that a b is equal to b c the base angles are equal let's say it's equal to s so if you add the three angles in triangle a b c the sum is 180 so you have s plus s plus 130 degrees equal to 180 degrees so s plus s is 2s equal to 180 degrees minus 130 degrees and you have 50 degrees to get s divide both side by 2 and s is equal to 25 degrees so s is b a c b a c so therefore angle p a d is equal to c a d that is 40 degrees plus angle b a c that is 25 degrees c a d plus b a c 40 degrees plus 25 degrees and that is 65 degrees to end this paper, there is every need for you to be saved if you are not. And to be saved, you just have to give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ because he is the only one that has the power to save anyone. If you are saved already, congratulations, live righteously and be prepared because on the last day, some will be taken and some will be left. Take good care of yourself. Stay out of trouble, study your books, do the needful at all times, flee every appearance of evil, don't defraud others to make money, use your hands and your brain to work genuinely and legally, and the Lord will bless you. Goodbye and stay tuned.